clapping for the singers this blessing. Bless you. Karibu ni koja hapa. Mulimba nikasema sasa. Acha tu. But God bless you so much. I want to call your attention others. I welcome you the precious and wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ to the service of the great king to the service of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I believe God has been gracious. God has been merciful to all of you and the fact that you are here is victory in itself. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That God has made it possible and you are not just here, you are the member of the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to call your attention. I have so many blessings to read from this blessed morning but uh, I want us to Turn to the book of First Kings. First Kings chapter 17. And my title this blessed morning, How Elijah Affects the Worship Life of Israel. Praise be to God. Amen. How Elijah Affects the Worship Life of Israel. First Kings 17. 
and Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Kerith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and, that, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Kerith, that is before Jordan. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Yeah. The next place we are reading this precious morning is from the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Deuteronomy 11. From verse 7. Or maybe we are, we are beginning from 11, but let us just go be behind a little bit of verse 7. But your eyes have seen all the great acts of the Lord which he did. Therefore shall ye keep all the commandments which I commanded, which I command you this day, that ye may be strong, and go in and possess the land, whether ye go to possess it. And that ye may be pro you may prolong your days in the land, which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give unto them unto their seed a land that floweth milk and honey. For the land where thou goest in to possess it is not as the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. From whence he came out, where thou sowest thy seed and watered it by thy foot as a garden of herbs. Verse 11. But the land whither thou go, whether ye go to possess it, is a land of hills and valleys, and drinketh water of the rain of heaven. A land which the Lord thy God careth for. The eyes of the Lord thy God are always upon it. From the beginning, hallelujah, of the year, even unto the end of the year. So God is giving the description of this land. That his eyes will be upon this land from the beginning of the year unto the end of the year. Praise be to God. But we are reading something in the book of Kings that a man by the name of Elijah pops up and closes the heavens. And he tells Ahab, as long as the Lord liveth according to my word before whom I stand in his presence, there will be no rain according to my word. Praise be to God. Amen. Verse 13. And it shall come to pass, if ye shall hearken diligently unto my commandments, which I command you this day, to love the Lord your God, and to serve him with all your heart, and with, and with all your soul. I want you to catch that verse very well. Serve God with all your heart and soul. You will understand when Elijah comes at Mount Carmel Contest, he tells them, how long hold ye between two? Opinions. Why? So Israel, at that time, they were not serving God with all their heart and with all their soul. Praise be to God. Amen. Then I will give you the rain of your land. It is due season, the first rain and the latter rain, that thou mayest gather in thy corn and thy wine and thine oil. And I will send grass in thy field for thy cattle. That thou mayest eat and be full. Hallelujah. Amen. Take heed to yourself that your heart be not deceived. And ye turn aside and serve other gods and worship them. And then the Lord wrath be kindled against you. And he shut up the heavens that there be no rain. And that the land yield not have fruit. Unless ye perish quickly from off the land which the Lord giveth you. Therefore shall ye lay up these my words in your hearts and in your soul and bind them for a sign upon your hand that 
that they may be as frontlets between your ears, and he shall teach them your children, speaking of them which thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou raisest up, and thou shalt write them upon the doorpost of thine house, and upon thy gates. Hallelujah. Amen. So these are the commandments of the Lord to the children of Israel. Amen. I mentioned something last Sunday that when Elijah shut up the heavens, you see, the way Israel used to worship God, it was based upon the agricultural seasons. Praise be to God. So when this man is setting up the heavens, you know it affected Israel so much. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why we want to see Elijah, his ministry, how it affects Israel in their worship to their Lord. Hallelujah. So Elijah is not just coming for the sake of coming. And Elijah, for your information, he does not come to Gentiles. Amen. Are we in agreement? Amen. Elijah does not come to Gentiles. His work and his purpose is only to the children of Israel. That is why we are nailing Elijah to Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Because you see, we are coming from a place whereby we were claiming that Behold, I send you Elijah. And that was our scripture. Praise be to God. That was not our scripture. And it will never be. Because he never came to you in the first place. How do you expect him to come to you the second time? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Because Paul has admonished us to rightly divide the word of truth. There is no error in the Bible. Amen. Because the Bible in its all entirety from Genesis to Revelation. It is the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. It is the word of the Lord. And the Bible, all of it, if you take away the 13 episodes, it's a Jewish book. It remains a book to the Israel. To Israel. Praise be to God. Amen. Because you take away the 13 letters that Paul has addressed to the body of Christ. Take Hebrews, you join it to, the, to, to Acts. Some few chapters of Acts. It just joins. Hallelujah. Amen. So we are coming to understand that God is a dispensationalist. The Bible is a dispensational book. Praise be to God. Amen. Because listen here. In one instance, God tells Adam, they have, he has given them everything to eat. The house. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. You come Genesis 9, something happens. What happens? After Noah. The floods. What happens? God makes another covenant again with Noah. He gives them now. They can now do what? Eat meat. Praise be to God. Yes. But you have to realize this is another generation altogether. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. So when he is coming in the book of Leviticus, when the children of Israel have been in the land of Egypt for how many years? 400 years. Praise be to God. And over, he comes and gives them description of the animals on which to partake of. Praise be to God. Amen. That is how God is a dispensation. There are so many dispensations in the Bible. Praise be to God. Amen. But we are seeing all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. But I want to tell you there is what doctrinally belongs to you as the body of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And there is what belongs to the Jews. Hallelujah. Amen. And there is what belongs to the nations. Amen. So you have to take the portion that belongs unto you. And do you know why Paul told Timothy to write, to study, and to, to, to rightly divide the word of truth? Timothy was bombarded with so much questions until he wanted to become a, repla a replacement theologist. Praise be to God. Amen. Because there were people pressing so much on Timothy. Yes. But Paul told, Paul, told, Paul told Timothy to study and to show himself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Praise be to God. Amen. That is why when you rightly divide the Bible, it becomes something, it becomes so nice. Amen. It is so easy now you can understand the Bible. Praise be to God. Amen. Because I want to tell you the mess where we are coming from. It was so hard. You wonder, am I the foolish virgin? Am I the bride? How, I, how, how, how on earth can we genders be the bride of Jesus Christ? Praise be to God. Amen. But I want to tell you, when you look at the Bible from the standpoint of rightly dividing it, 
you will be blessed. Hallelujah. So this precious morning, we want to look at how Elijah, Elijah just never came for the sake of coming. Praise be to God. And I want to tell you where we are reading today, where we've read in the book of Deuteronomy. Elijah understood the word of the Lord. And he never just came and prayed for the sake of praying. Because he looked at the condition Israel was in. And he knew this is the judgment that fits Israel at this hour. Praise be to God. And let us just lay a background a little bit. How did Israel find themselves in the place where they were? Praise be to God. How did they find them? Leviticus 26. God had given them how many? Five causes of chastisement. Praise be to God. And for you to make it simple and easy for you, Leviticus 26, three categories. Blessings, Chastisement, a promised rest. Praise be to God. Amen. How many verses? 46 verses in that chapter. Praise be to God. Amen. And when you bless, because God first of all blesses, he tells the children of Israel that I will bless you. Praise be to God. Amen. God is blessing them. Maybe let us turn to Leviticus 26. Because some of you, the way you are looking at me, you don't understand. What am I talking about? Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Leviticus 26. Just to lay the background so that I don't lose some of you along the way. Praise be to God. Amen. Leviticus 26. Verse 1. Or oh, let us begin with the verse. Yeah, verse 1. You shall make you no idols, nor graven images, neither rare you up a standing image Never shall ye set up any image of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Look at how Leviticus 26 is beginning. Ye shall keep my Sabbath and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Verse 3. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then I will give you rain in due season. Look at if you know it is conditional <laughs> praise be to God Amen. it is conditional if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them then I will give you rain in due season and the land shall yield her increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruit and your threshing shall reach unto the vintage and the vintage shall reach unto the sowing time praise be to God Amen. do you understand what the Bible is saying that they will harvest and we have enough until the next harvesting season. There is no promise of hunger. But it is on our condition. They don't serve any other gods or images for that matter. Praise be to God. Amen. And I'll give you peace in the land. And you shall lie down and none shall make you afraid. And I will read evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. So everything is about the land. Everything is about the land. land. Praise be to God. Amen. Look at the blessings of God unto Israel. And he shall chase your enemies. And they shall fall before you by the sword. How many will fall by your right hand? Ten thousand. Praise be to God. Amen. Those are the promises of the Lord. And five of you shall chase a an hundred. And a an hundred of you shall put ten thousand to fly. And your enemies shall fall before you by the sword. And I will have respect unto you. And make you fruitful. And multiply you and establish my covenant with you. God telling man that God will respect men. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he shall eat old store and bring forth the old because of the new. And the new has come. The new harvest has come. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And I will set my tabernacle among you, and my soul shall not abhor you. And I will walk among you and will be your God and you shall be my people. I am the Lord your God which brought you forth out of the land of Egypt that ye should not be their bondmen and I have broken the bands of your yoke and made you go up upright. Praise be to God. Amen. But look at verse 14. Something changes. A change of tune now. But if you will not hearken unto me and will not do all these commandments. And if you shall despise my statutes. And if you are so above my judgment. So that you will not do all my commandments. But that ye break my covenant. 
Verse 16. I will also do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and burning argue. They shall consume the, eye, the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and, will, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, for your enemies shall eat it. Look at now God giving them now <laughs> conditions for chastisement. Praise be to God. Amen. And we how we have been going through the series, we saw how in the book of Samuel, after the death of Joshua, Praise be to God. Amen. We have got judges. But before Joshua dies, he calls all the children of Israel again. And he warns them, not even to mention the gods their fathers served across the flats in the land where they were dwelling. Praise be to God. Amen. But the children of, did the children of Israel hearken to the covenant of the Lord? No. Praise be to God. Amen. In Judges is something new altogether because now, Judges is the first chastisement. Hallelujah. Amen. But now we come to the book of Samuel. Somewhere something happened. There is a woman there called Grace. She looks at the condition of the children of Israel and understood why, even who. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. The woman that came with Ruth. What was her name? <laughs> Na Naomi. Naomi. Praise be to God. Amen. We understand how Naomi found herself where? In the land of Moabites. This was because of the Famine because of the trouble the children of Israel had brought unto them th themselves. Praise be to God. Amen. But she comes back. She doesn't want. She doesn't want one to be called Naomi anymore because she wants to be called Mara because she has lost her husband. Her two sons have died, and she has. She's only coming with Ruth. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the book of Samuel. Something happens. Here is a woman, a family, Elkanah, two wives, Penina and Hannah. Praise be to God. Amen. Hannah looks at the condition of the children of Israel. Something happens and Hannah realizes, I don't want just to point fingers. I want to be part of the solutions. And she prayed and she knows that prayer changes something. Amen. Prayer changes the course of a nation. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And that is why when you pray, pray with an understanding that you're not just praying for the sake of praying. Hallelujah. Amen. Prayer changes the course of a nation. Because Israel was ready to go into the second course of punishment. But here is a woman. That looked at the priesthood how it was polluted. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And Hannah, what did she do? She prayed until even the priest himself, Eli, thought she was a drunkard woman. But this woman prayed with a deep agony. Amen. She said, I want to be part of the solution. I don't want to point fingers anymore. There is a great lesson to us, to us with the body of Christ. Amen. Don't point fingers, be part of the solution. Praise be to God. Amen. And Hannah prayed, and Samuel is born. Hallelujah. Samuel. Both a priest, a prophet, and what? A judge. A judge. Threefold in one man. Israel enters into kingdom until David sits as a king. Solomon, a golden age in Israel. Praise be to God. Amen. All nations are coming to Israel. The promises of God, Israel has won, has conquered, and is sitting at the pinnacle of all nations. Hallelujah. Amen. But something happens that will lead us to the place where Elijah is coming on the scene and shutting up the heavens. Praise be to God. Amen. Solomon, something he triggers God by doing what? Marrying women from other nations. Because God had told the children of Israel, remember, don't intermarry. Praise be to God. Amen. Do you remember those nice summons protecting your bloodline from pollution when we were in Branham? Praise be to God. Amen. How you thought you are the people to protect your bloodline. It was Israel that was supposed to protect their bloodline. Praise be to God. Amen. And I want to tell you, sometimes we talk about the things of Branham. As ministers, you think it is something to joke about. It is something that you speak with a lot of shame. When you come, when your eyes have been opened to the great truth and realities in the Bible, for you to come and admit you are wrong then, takes so much humility. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. It takes a lot of humility. And we are doing it. Because, let me tell you, this is the word of God. Amen. You have got, I have got no place I'm taking you people. You are the children of God. Amen. And I have nothing to do with you. Amen. Only but to point you to the truth. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Solomon comes and goes even back to Egypt. He marries a daughter of Pharaoh. Brings, do you know how sad it was by the time Elijah is coming on the scene in Israel? Israel was at its lowest condition forever. Praise be to God. Amen. So Elijah is not just coming on the scene and shutting up the heavens. Something has angered God. 
Praise be to God. Amen. Let us turn to the book of First Kings. First Kings 11. Look at the, what thing, the things that Solomon did. In comparison as to what God had forbade them not to do. Praise be to God. Because Solomon knew. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Do you know Moab and Ammon? Do you know them? Moab and Ammon. How many? These were the children of Lot. And look at the condition. How these girls, the things that were happening in Sodom, I told you last Sunday, a Gentile will always be a Gentile. And whatever even is happening in the world today is not a sign to we, the body of Christ. Those, if that is what Gentiles are. And I want to tell you one of these days we are going to share on the Gentiles in flesh and their idols. A sermon of three hours. Praise be to God. Amen. How did these girls get the idea of making their father drunk and having sex with their father? Huh? Yeah. That is who Gentiles are. Sodomites who are not the children of Israel. Those, that, those are Gentiles. So when you hear things happening in the world, you think, you think it is a sign that God is coming. No. Are you waiting for the second coming in the first place? No. no. You are waiting for the rapture coming. Amen. These people, that is who they are. That is their character. That is their nature. True. People are defining themselves in their bodies. Those are true Gentiles now. Do you expect something else good from them? If God does not save you, and I want to tell you, when God is opening your eyes, you will appreciate the grace of God in your life. Amen. That God has saved you from that pollution and defilement that is happening in the world. Amen. And I want to tell you how the world is glorifying homosexuality and lesbianism and bestiality. That is the norm of the day. I want to tell you, it is a sad condition upon the face of the earth. But I want to tell you, those things have to be manifested. So that you appreciate the grace of God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. So that you don't live anyhow. Because Paul tells us, your body is the temple of the living God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. You can't define your body anyhow. You are bought with a price. It costs God his own life for you to be where you are today. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. So you cannot just behold, dishonor your body in any way. Amen. Because there is money. Amen. No, 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 no. Amen. Because I want to tell you, these people, these ambassadors of all these things, they are paid a lot of money. Yes. Those who that that is what Gentiles are. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. So Solomon goes back again to those nations and marry their women. And the Bible tells us Solomon loved many women. Hallelujah. Amen. Love many strange women. And the Bible is very clear. Strange. Why is that? Does the Bible call them strange? Because they are not Israelites. They are not Jews. They are strangers to the covenants of Israel. They are strangers to the, to the covenants. They are islands. These are people who doesn't have God. Amen. Yet the Bible, Solomon goes and marries them. Hallelujah. Amen. So we want to see how Israel gets to a point when Elijah comes and shuts up the heavens. Hallelujah. Amen. So what, are, what does he do? Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn and they will turn. Surely for they will turn away your heart after other gods. Solomon claimed unto this in love. Praise be to God. Amen. Why was God so much concerned about the children of Israel? They have been turned away from following him. Because God was supposed to be their God. Only they were not supposed to worship any other gods. And I want to tell you, the nations where Israel, the land of Canaan, was so much full of this abomination. People worship idols. Praise be to God. Amen. And that is why God told them to destroy, to kill each and every one of them. Not to have mercy upon them. Not to spare. Not to tolerate them. Praise be to God. Amen. Not to lower down the bars. Why? Because these people, they had a way of worship. They will lure the children of Israel away from the true worship, the true God. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why God was so much concerned about their worship. 
That is why he never wanted anyone to go and worship other strange gods. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. So, verse, verse 3. And, his, and he had 700 wives, princes, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. <laughs> These women turned away the heart of Solomon from, for, from serving the Lord God. Just like his father. David, praise be to God. Amen. Because the Bible tells us Solomon was a man after David was a man after God's own heart. Do you know how? David was a kind of a man, although he was a king. But the moment he made a mistake and the mistake was pointed unto David, David repented and cried. Praise be to God. Amen. At what point did David think about building God's house? When God had subdued, God had given the children of Israel peace. Praise be to God. Amen. As an ordinary man, David could have thought now of how expanding his kingdom and David had a house. But at that hour, when there was no war with all those tribes, that is when David thought about building God a house. Talk about God giving you rest. You prayed for something and God has answered. That is the hour you should be serving God more than ever. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Because at that hour is when David thought about God building God a house and he said, how, why should I dwell in a house that is well built and the ark of the covenant dwells where? In tents. Praise be to God. Amen. But look at the condition Solomon is in. But can we find a place Deuteronomy 7 just to understand why Deuteronomy 7 look at Deuteronomy 7 When, that, when the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whether thou goest to possess it and has cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Gigashites, and the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater, might, greater and mightier than thou. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them nor show mercy unto them. This is the word of the law. This is his command. Verse 3. Neither shalt thou make marriages with them. Thy daughters, thy daughters, thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me, that they may serve other gods. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and destroy thee suddenly. The moment idol worship crops up in Israel, God comes down upon them in wrath. Praise be to God. Amen. But thus shall ye deal with them. Ye shall destroy their altars and break down their images and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with the fire. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people. Amen. Look at how serious it is. God is strictly stressing the point that they are a special people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not see, did, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because you are more in number. No? Than any people. For ye are the fewest of all the people. Look at even God is going further and telling them why he chose them. Praise be to God. Amen. The, verse 8. But because the Lord loved you. Praise be to God. Amen. And because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. Has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand. And redeemed you out of the house of bondage. From the hand of Pharaoh the king of Egypt. Now therefore that the Lord thy God he is God. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgment which, the, which I command thee this day to, the, to do them. Praise be to God. Yes. So we are seeing Solomon is setting up a stage. He's activating for the children of Israel to go into idol worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Because when 
Elijah is coming. Who was the king then? Ah, praise be to God. Amen. And Jeroboam is the man that instituted idol worship in Israel. Because Israel is now divided. Hallelujah. And who, who was the prophet then? Ahijah. Praise be to God. Amen. Because it's a, it was Ahijah under him that knew what the condition, the stage as to which Israel was in. And Israel was entering into the second cause of chastisement. Praise be to God. Amen. So by the time Elijah is coming, we are into the third cause of punishment. Hallelujah. Amen. And Israel has gone down. Until now, these people, there is an arm on the throne. And who, who was his wife? Jezebel. Hallelujah. Amen. Idol worship is now in the land. What I want you to take home today. What closed the heavens? Because Elijah is coming. What closed the heavens? It was what? Idol worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So, when someone tells you he is Elijah. Elijah to who? Amen. Yeah. Those are nice scriptural questions to ask someone. When he tells you Elijah must come. He is coming to who? To do what? Because Elijah is coming. And I want to tell you, idol worship is now entrenched in the land of Israel. They have got even groups and images. Praise be to God. Amen. Because when you read down there, 1 Kings 11, you will see the things that Solomon went as far as doing. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And he destroyed all those things in the land of Israel. Now God has now to shut up the heavens. Praise be to God. Amen. And I want to tell you, when the heavens were shut, it was the lowest moment in the life of the children of Israel. Why? Because their worship, hallelujah, Amen. their worship was connected to rain. Amen. Bado, uh -uh. praise be to God. Amen. The worship of the children of Israel was connected to something coming from the heavens. Amen. Because their worship, God told them in the book of Exodus 23. Is it Exodus 23? How many times should they appear before the Lord? Uh -uh. Praise be to God. Amen. 23. Let us turn to Exodus 23. Exodus 23. Verse 14. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. And I want to tell you, I'm almost closing. So you have to sit on your edge. Praise be to God. Amen. Exodus 23, verse 14. <laughs> Three times thou shalt keep a feast unto me in the year. Three, how many times? Three times. Three times. Hallelujah. Amen. Thou shalt keep the feast of the unleavened bread. Thou shalt eat unleavened bread seven days, as I have commanded thee in the time appointed of the month, Abib. For in it thou shalt comest thou from Egypt and none shall appear before me empty. <laughs> so you cannot just go before the Lord empty handed. Hallelujah. Amen. You have to go with something. But how can you go when the heaven is shut? There is no rain. <laughs> Do you see how sad it was? <laughs> that is why I told you it was important. And look at how idol worship was so something so low to the great economy of God dealing with the children of Israel. He was so wrong with them. That is why it was idol worship that shut up the heavens. So Elijah was coming and idol worship made the work of Elijah so easy. Amen. And he prayed according to the word of the Lord. He knew Amen. Deuteronomy 11. If these people turn aside and worship other gods, the heaven will be shut. Praise be to God. Amen. And let me tell you, Israel was not the land of Canaan. You are not supposed to do irrigation. There is nothing like drip lines in, in Canaan. It was supposed to be God opening up the heavens by himself from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Praise be to God. In a sense, everything, it was supposed to be the doing of the Lord. A land flowing with the milk and honey. But what are we seeing? God shutting up the heavens. Why? That is why you, under, you have to understand the book of Leviticus 26 is key. God does not do things just for the sake of doing God is not just a pastor with his actions. There is a reason as to why God do stay, does things at a particular time and a season. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. God is not unjust. He just wakes up and punishes people. No, 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 no. Leviticus 26 teaches one thing, one key thing. 
that God is faithful to his own word. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. God is faithful to his own word. Amen. What makes this Bible real? <laughs> what makes it real? How can you say this Bible is real? It is because God keeps his own word. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And I want to tell you, God keeps us on his own word. It is a universal truth to we, the body of Christ, Amen. and to the Jews. Praise be to God. Amen. And to the nations. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. So God has set up the heavens. Because there is idol worship. And not only that. What is idol worship? These people are worshiping elements. Because how could Elijah call for the fire? These people believed in Baal who could answer by fire. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. These people are observing things. They have now left the God aside. <laughs> Elijah was so rough. Elijah never pointed the children of Israel to a cloud to worship it. <laughs> Do you know where I am? <laughs> and you have an Elijah pointing you to a cloud. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. Elijah pointed the children of Israel to the true God. Mark not to a cloud. See his eyes? Can you see his beard? That was not the Elijah we knew. A man that came. A hairy man. A man that his diet was from the wilderness. Praise be to God. Amen. Look at that dressing. Technically knocks out that Elijah from America. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. Because there are so many Elijahs on the face, on the face of the earth today. Can the true Elijah stand up and be counted? Let them agree. Let them meet in a tent, in a conference somewhere. Let all of them agree and tell us who is the true Elijah. Praise be to God. And you have got qualifications laid up in the Bible. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. So Elijah is not just coming for the sake of coming. Praise be to God. Amen. Go tell the children of Israel, verse 20, verse, verse 15. And the feast of the harvest, the first fruit of the labors, which thou hast sown in the field, and the feast of ingathering, which is in the end of the year, when thou hast gathered in, in thy labors out of the field, three times in the year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Not empty-handed. You have to go with something. But I want to ask you a question. How could the children of Israel go before the Lord? Yet the heavens has been closed. Three and a half years. Praise be to God. Amen. Verse 18. Thou shalt not all shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with the living bread, neither shall, shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. The first of the first fruit, thy land, thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not sit a kid in the mother's meal. Verse 20. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for will not. Praise be to God. Amen. So this angel is a person, okay? The Bible tells us, provoke him not. Hallelujah. Amen. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do that, do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversary. When the children of Israel will appear before the Lord three times in a year, God will be an enemy to their enemy. He will be an adversary to their adversary. Praise be to God. Amen. And when we are talking about three times, we are talking about the Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Passover, which was which season? Bali. Uh -huh. Bali season. Hallelujah. So, how can you go before the Lord? Yet the heavens is shut. Praise be to God. Amen. You see how it was so hard for the children of Israel. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. This is the purpose of Elijah coming. Elijah never just came for the sake of coming. Not just to say, that says the Lord. No, 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 no. And I want to tell you, miracles does not qualify a man to be Elijah. Mm -hmm. The supernatural does not qualify an individual to be an Elijah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Because we saw Balaam with a sacrifice. God putting his words in his own, the mouth of Balaam. Mm. <laughs> so someone should not scare you about the miracles that Branham did. Amen. Balaam, God put his own words in the mouth of Balaam. Yet Balaam was a false prophet. Yes. 
Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. So, someone should not scare you. Because this man did this miracles. He did supernatural. He healed the people. Let me tell you, you can pray for the sick. What does it make you to be? <laughs> yes. You want to tell me you have never prayed for a situation and God answers? Does it make you an Elijah? No. <laughs> yeah. Praise be to God. Amen. Someone should not scare you. Just because he has done miracles. No, 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 no. I want to tell you, gifts and callings are without repentance. Amen. Amen. Is it not in the Bible? Yeah. Gifts and callings are not without repentance. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> Let me tell you. There are people who can tell you your life. Everything that happens in your life. And these people are not Christians. This is something that is following the bloodline. Praise be to God. Amen. Those are spirits that are in the bloodline. They are able to discern you. And tell you exactly what is happening. What Everything that, do, that has to do with your life. Yet these people are not Christians at all. What will you call that? Do you call them Elijah? Just because they have discerned you. And you know we, we glorify the discernment so much. Yet it was the word of knowledge. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. The word of knowledge. Praise be to God. Amen. Gifts and callings are without dependence. Someone telling you all that, all that has happened in your life does not qualify him to be alive. What am I saying? The miracles that man did does not qualify him to be Elijah. Mm -hmm. Scripturally, we have got qualifications. Does he meet any one of them? Praise be to God. Amen. Elijah of the Bible pointed Israel to the true God. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. He pointed them to the true God. Yes. Not to a cloud. A cloud that has been contended with the government. The government claims it is theirs. Yet the message believers claims it is the appearing of the law. Appearing to who? People are not looking for him. He just comes. And the Bible says the same cloud that took him he will come in the same manner. Where did he go? From which spot on the earth? Where did he go? Where did God take him up? Then in the same place he will come. Down. Hallelujah. Amen. Not in Mount Sunset in America somewhere. We are talking about the land that God gave to, the, to Abraham. The land that God gave to the children of Israel. The same spot he left. That is the same spot. He will come. Amen. In the same manner. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Not to our people who are not expecting him. Amen. Because the Bible tells us. To them that are looking for his second coming. Will he come? <laughs> not to people who are. He never appeared in the first place. Because. When Elijah is on the land, the book of Kings, where were you people? Can you answer me? Where were you? You are strangers to these things that we are talking about. Amen. You had no hope. You had no God. You had no Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. But the children of Israel, when they were coming from Egypt, in the wilderness, they had Christ. Christ was that rock that followed them. Praise be to God. Amen. That was Christ. That is the scripture. They had God. They had covenant. They had prophets. But to you, you are aliens, all those things. You are strangers. Praise be to God. Amen. So, the first time these people should appear before God, it was during Passover, Bunny season, and living bread. Hallelujah. That is the first season. The first time they are appearing before God. And God has told them, if you do this, if you appear before me three times, I'll be an enemy to your enemy. I'll be an adversary to your adversary. Because these people are now worshiping God. Because Heaven was connected rain coming down. And when rain came down, there was crop in the field. And now these people can worship God. Can go to Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Can the males three times can appear before the Lord. But I want to tell you how hard was it when Elijah closed up the heavens. Because God is a jealous God. You can't serve God and the world at the same time. Praise be to God. Amen. Because those idols that the children of Israel went to worship, they took the place of God. Praise be to God. Amen. They took the place of God and that is why God even chased them away from the land. God broke, they, they broke the covenant
covenant of the God. Praise be to God. And God could not withstand that worship anymore. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us just read this. The book of Kings. I want to see the integrity, the gravity of this matter. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. First Kings 12. I want you to look at what Jeroboam does. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim and dwelt therein and went out from the thence and built Kenwell. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David? If these people go up and to do a sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, three times, okay? Three times these people are supposed to do what? To appear before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. But this man is saying if they go three times in Jerusalem to worship before the Lord, then the kingdom will be taken away from me. Praise be to God. Amen. Verse 27. If these people go up to do sacrifice in the house of the Lord at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of these people turn again unto their Lord. This is a man who is, God has given them how many tribes? Ten. Yet he is so insecure. What does he do now? Even unto Rehoboam, king of Judah. And they shall kill me and go again to Rehoboam, king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel and made two cows of gold. Eh? Two cows of gold. And said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee out, brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. Pointing people to an image and telling him, Behold the Lord your God that brought you from bondage. Praise be to God. And that is why anytime there is an evil king, Jeroboam, Jeroboam is a reference. Praise be to God. This is a man that turned away the children of Israel from serving the true God. And he said one in Bethel, and the other put in put he in that. And this thing became a sin for the people who went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. And he made an house of high places and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not of the sons of Levi. Praise be to God. Amen. People of the lowest caliber, he made them priests. <laughs> How wicked this man was. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise. And verse 31 Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth man. On the fifth, not even the seventh. You see, the children of Israel, they had calendar. The seventh month. But now he's putting his feet on the eighth month. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And of the cows that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel, which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own hand and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel and he offered upon the altar and burned incense. Praise be to God. When you read verse 13 God sends a young prophet and he wins and he proclaims judgment against that altar. What does Jeroboam do? He stretches his hand to touch this young man and his hand dries up. Mukono ilikauka. Praise be to God. But this young prophet he treated under the Lord. And God restored his hand. That is how the sin of Jeroboam troubled Israel. Praise be to God. Amen. And we are seeing idol worship being entrenched so much in the land until God shut up the heavens. So these people cannot appear before God even the first for the first time during the Passover. Because they have got nothing. There is nothing in their fields. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And the second time was Pentecost. What, were, what did they do? It was witch season. They had to go before the Lord. The second time, the, which was Pentecost. Witch season. Praise be to God. Amen. But they were not. The key thing is, they were not supposed to appear before the Lord empty handed. You had to go with something. So Israel, during all those time, they cannot appear before the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. They can't go. The heaven is shut up. Praise be to God. Amen. The third time they appear, it is during the tabernacle. 
fruit season. Now you have got a fruit in your hand. And at that time, you need wine, you need oil. The Holy Spirit. You need wine, stimulation of revelation. Praise be to God. How can you appear before God? You are so much dry. Praise be to God. Amen. These people are weak. The Bible talks about virgins fainting. At what time is this? In the book of Hosea. <laughs> can we turn there? Praise be to God. Amen. Amos. Amos. Amos 8. Hallelujah. Amos 8. Yes. Amos 8, 11. But read verse 10. He says, And I will turn your feast into mourning, and all your songs into lamentations. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head. And I will make it as the morning, as of an only son, and the end thereof is a bitter day. Eh? These people, they are feast into what? Morning. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, verse 11, the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor a thirst for water, but a famine of the hearing of the words of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Elijah has pronounced a curse, and he has disappeared from the sea. God told Elijah, go hide thyself, because God had prepared something, a place to hold, to cut off his servant during that hour when there is no worship anymore. Praise be to God. Amen. A famine not for bread, but what? For the word of the Lord. These people can't worship God. The heaven is Praise be to God. Amen. Do you see why it was so important for Elijah to come to the children of Israel? Do you see why it, the ministry of Elijah is so much important? Praise be to God. Amen. To the children of Israel. Not to we Gentiles. Because we are not supposed to appear before the Lord three times. And I want to tell you when this man is coming and is shutting up the heavens. These people are weak. Praise be to God. Amen. Turn with me to the book of Zechariah. Zechariah, Zechariah. Verse 8. People are so weak, they can't worship God. Their hands are so weak, that their hands are so feeble. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Verse eight, chapter 8. That said the Lord of hosts, let your hands be strong. Verse 9. Yeah? Let your hands be strong. Ye that hear in these days, this was by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the fountains of the house of the Lord host of hosts was laid that the temple might be built for before these days there was no hire for man no any hire for the beast neither was there any peace for him that went out of came in because of the affliction for i set all men everyone against his neighbor but now i will not not be unto the residue of these people as in the former days say the lord of hosts for the seed shall be prosperous the vine shall give her fruit, and the ground shall give her increase, and the heavens shall give their due. And I will cause the remnant of these people to possess all these things. And it shall come to pass that as you are a curse among the heathens, a house of Judah, and the house of Israel, so will I save you, and it shall be a blessing. Fear not, but let your hands be strong. Praise be to God. Amen. Do you understand the importance of Elijah? Amen. Elijah shutting up the heavens because of idol worship. What I want you to take home today is what shut the heavens is because of the idol worship. And Elijah came to take away the curse so that Israel can serve God again. Amen. <laughs> Elijah at the evening time the Bible tells us at the evening time there shall be light. At what time was did Elijah offer his bullock? At the evening time. Hallelujah. Amen. And he took away the curse so that Israel, rain can come. Praise be to God. Amen. Rain can come 
so that these people can serve a true God again. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And when rain came, what happened? They cannot now go back to their things and cultivate. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you see Elijah, a type of Jesus Christ? Because he took Israel to the atonement at the evening time. Uh -huh. <laughs> what did Elijah do at the evening time? He took Israel to the atonement at the evening time and the castle was taken away. The castle was lifted up and now rain, he can now pray and rain can come. These people can go to the field again, praise be to God, Amen. and plant and plow and plant and they can have wheat. Amen. They can have oil. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. They can have barley. There can be something in their field and now they can appear before God because they have got something in their hand. Praise be to God. Amen. So Elijah never just came for the sake of coming. Praise be to God. Amen. What did he come to do? He came to institute an atonement at the evening time. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. You know how we used to say there shall be light at the evening time? The path to glory is really do what? Surely fine. Praise be to God. Amen. How we used to, how we love to sing those songs. Praise be to God. But we've come to realize, Elijah is not just coming. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Because these people are so feeble. The description we are reading in Zechariah, their hands are so weak. The virgins and the young men are fainting because they have no strength. Why? There is no worship anymore in the land of Israel. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. There is no worship anymore in the land of Israel. So someone cannot just come and tell you, I'm Elijah. What curse have you come to take away? Praise be to God. What curse did you bring up come to take away? First of all, are you Jews, you people? Are you? We are not Jews. We are Gentiles, the body of Christ. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. People who are, and Elijah came to take away idol worship from the land. That is why when Elijah let me tell you. Let us read 1 Kings 18. Praise be to God. 1 Kings 8. 18. Hallelujah. Because at the evening time, at the evening time, a time of sacrifice. Hallelujah. And God has already told him, go and appear before Ah, because I'm going, going to send a light. I'm going to send rain. Praise be to God. And he gave them a challenge. Verse 21, 18, 21. He tells them. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, and Ahab said unto him, Are thou he that troubleth Israel? And he answered, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, thou hast followed Balim. So the issue here is Baal worship. A strange worship in the land. Praise be to God. Amen. The heaven is shut up. Are you connecting Deuteronomy 11? And where we are in the book of Kings. Praise be to God. Amen. So Elijah knew the word of the Lord and he prayed according to the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Verse 19. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel. And the prophets of Baal, 450. And the prophets of the grooves, 400, which eat at Jezebel's table. How many in total? 850. Praise be to God. Amen. So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long holds he between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The children of Israel. That is why you will understand Jesus comes and tells the children of Israel, love your God, serve the Lord your God with all your heart. And what? And? Soul and mind. Yani, every part of you serve the Lord. Amen. And Elijah is telling them, how long holds it between two opinions? Between Baal and God. Praise be to God. Amen. He's telling them, you have to make up your mind today. You can't serve God and mammon. Yes. You have to make a choice today. Amen. Are you going to serve the Lord God or are you going to serve Baal? But the children of Israel kept quiet. Why? These people, 
They were torn between not knowing if God will answer. The true God will, serve, will answer by a fire or Balim will answer by fire. Because Balim used to answer by fire then. But when the prophet of God is on the land, Hallelujah. Amen. Balim cannot answer. Because the, the, here God has taken dominion now. Praise be to God. Amen. God has taken dominion. And he wants to show his people a true God. Praise be to God. Amen. Remember when God sent Moses to Egypt. What did God do? He met Moses at the burning bush. Praise be to God. Amen. What was the power that was over Egypt? What was the emblem of Egypt? A snake. <laughs> you know, you've never understood why the rod of Moses turned into a serpent. What was dominating over Egypt was a serpent. So God had to make Moses overcome the serpent at the desert before he goes to Egypt. Praise be to God. Amen. Before Moses could go and face Pharaoh, he had now to conquer that power. That was over the children of Israel in Egypt. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. So it was not just a matter of that rod turning into a serpent. It was a power that was over God's people, God's children. Praise be to God. Amen. And when Moses conquered it, he could go before Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, Thus saith the Lord. You can imagine going before the president today and telling the president, Thus saith the Lord. And you are not scared. What had happened to Moses? A Mo Moses that was a man that was timid. A man that ran away. But now Moses, where are you going? I'm going to take over. But God made sure Moses was landed in all the skills of Egypt. He knew the security patterns and barriers and categories of the security of Egypt. Praise be to God. Amen. But now something has happened to that man at the back of the desert. He's going before Pharaoh and he's not afraid. Praise be to God. Amen. So what is happening here? Baal used to answer by fire. Otherwise, Elijah couldn't have called for fire. Praise be to God. Amen. He gave them a challenge. Let the God that answers by fire, let him be the God. And the children of Israel say, they kept quiet. But I was happy because he knew Balim will answer. Praise be to God. Amen. And he gave them a challenge. And these people cut themselves from the morning. But at the evening time, something happens. Elijah repairs the altar. The altar that was broken, praise be to God. Amen. The altar that was broken, Elijah repaired it. How many twelve? How many stones did he lay? Twelve. According to the number of the children of Israel. Praise be to God. Amen. So if you are a gentle claiming to be part of the children of Israel, which door will you go through? Everything is twelve, 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 twelve. Praise be to God. Not even thirteen, but twelve, twelve. According to the children of Israel. Twelve. Allah. Praise be to God. And when he did that, and he called upon the Lord, what did God do? God answered by fire. Praise be to God. Amen. Look at verse 37. 18, 37. And it came to pass, verse 36. And it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice. Because I want to tell you, you Gentiles, you have got nothing to do with the evening sacrifice. You've got no time called the evening time. <laughs> Praise be to God. You have got no time called the evening time. It is Israel that was given timelines. Amen. Amen. Daniel gave them how many years? 490. We Gentiles have got no timelines. When the Bible comes and talks about times and seasons, let me tell you. God has not deal with we Gentiles with the body of Christ according to times and seasons. But here Elijah is pointing Israel at the evening time. A time of sa sacrifice. Praise be to God. Yes. Elijah the prophet came near and said Lord God of Abraham look at how he's beginning his prayer. Lord God of Abraham Isaac and of Israel let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Praise be to God. Amen. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. A man dealing with their hearts. 
Praise be to God. Amen. He dealt with the children of Israel turning the hearts in the first time. That is when, why he will come the second time. Malachi speaks about him. Praise be to God. Amen. He will come the second time. Here, where were you? When he was turning the children of Israel the hearts for the first time. Where were you people? So how can you claim that you are waiting for him to come to you the second time? Praise be to God. Amen. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stone and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they say, the Lord, he is, go he is the God. The Lord, he is the God. <laughs> Praise be to God. Look at that worship. Who came to restore, to restore it? It is Elijah. At what time? At the evening time. He has come to take away the curse now. Praise be to God. Amen. God has accepted the sacrifice. And Elijah said unto them, Take the prophets of Baal. Let, let not one of them be escape. And they took them, and Elijah brought them down to the brook Kishon and slew them there. And Elijah said unto Ah, get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to top of Mount Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. And he said unto his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, There is nothing. And he said, Go again seven times. Why seven? Why seven? Praise be to God. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there arises a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. Amen. And he said, go up, see, and help, prepare thy chariot and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with cloud and wind and there was a great rain and ah abroad and went to Jezreel. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he gathered up his loins and ran before Ab to the entrance of Jezreel. A man under that anointing, even he overtook the chariot of our praise be to God. At the evening time again, there is a cloud. Who is bringing the cloud? It is Elijah. He has broken the curse. Now the children of Israel can receive the rain. Praise be to God. And when the rain, because there is a scripture that says, ask of the Lord rain. Can someone give me that scripture? Ask the Lord Praise be to God. Amen. Zachariah ten one. Ask the Lord rain at the evening time. Praise be to God. Zachariah ten. of the Lord rain in the time of the latter rain so the Lord will shall make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to every one grass in the field for the idols have, have spoken vanity and the diviners have seen a lie and have told false dreams they comfort in vain therefore they went their way as a flock they were troubled because there was no shepherd diviners have done what Told a lie. <laughs> Idols have spoken vanity. Elijah at the evening time. Idols have done what? Spoken vanity. They have not helped the children of Israel. They have not answered by fire. It was all vanity. Praise be to God. Amen. But at the evening time, ask of the Lord rain. Break the fallow land. Because the land has been fallow. How can you break the land when there is no rain? The former and the latter rain in the evening time. Praise be to God. Amen. Coming on the children of Israel now, their worship can be instituted again. Praise be to God. Amen. Do you understand when the Bible tells us Elijah shall surely come and restore all things? So that these people can have a worship with God again. Praise be to God. Amen. At the evening time. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Because idol worship couldn't help them. Because they needed oil. They needed wine. They needed barley. 
praise the spirit of God. They needed bread. How could they appear before God empty? Because the heaven was shut. Praise be to God. Amen. Do you see how Elijah was so important to the children of Israel? To their service, hallelujah. Yeah. Their worship was tied to the ministry of Elijah. Mm -hmm. That is why God used, God loved the spirit of Elijah so much. Hallelujah. Amen. He's a man that came to lay the axe at the root of the tree. He never compromised. Hallelujah. Amen. He never compromised. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because let me tell you, idols turn away, turn the hearts of children of the children of Israel away from the true God. Is it so? Is it not what we have read in the Bible? Why did God tell the children of Israel not to marry from among the nations? Because those people they had their own worship. And these women, do you know they waited until Solomon was old? That he has no strength anymore. He has no authority anymore. Praise be to God. To go by demon waiting until you get old. When you are a young man or a young woman, that demon cannot attack you. It waits until you get old. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Until it strikes. Because Solomon was old. And he just waited until this man was old. And then they told Solomon, why should we go to Jerusalem? Just build us a shrine here. Build us something here. And Solomon did it. Without, because he is old. There is that age when you reach, you don't want trouble anymore. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. You want peace. And that is the time those demons come. They come no king. Praise be to God. Amen. That is why you understand when David prayed and he said, God, forsake me not in my old age. Praise be to God. Amen. Be with me. Praise be to God. Amen. Be man with me. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God not forsake you in your old age. Amen. Because there are things that are bound to happen in your old age. Amen. But let God keep you. Praise be to God. Amen. Let God sustain you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because these idols, they turn the children of Israel away. Amen. And what were these? What were those nations having? Quickly turn with me to Deuteronomy 4. Something Deuteronomy 4. Look at the things those Gentiles were, were worshipping. Verse 16. Deuteronomy 4, 16. Let's see corrupt yourself and make you a graven image. The similitude of any figure and likeness of a male or a female. A similitude, okay? A male or a female. The likeness of any beast that is on the earth. The likeness of any winged fowl that flyeth in the air. The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground. The likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. So there were people who are worshipping things in the sea. These are Gentiles. Praise be to God. They were worshipping things in the air. Praise be to God. Verse 19. Unless thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, so there were people who were worshipping there, the sun, and the moon, and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, should be driven, should be driven to worship them, and serve them, which the Lord thy God has divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. Amen. <laughs> So look at this verse. So when someone points unto you a cloud, is that not an idol worship? Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. It's not an idol. Is it not an idol? It is an idol. Amen. And people have gotten churches. Mighty angels coming from eternity. Praise be to God. Amen. Those are not mighty angels. This an Elijah, a fake Elijah pointing people to something that God forbade even the children of Israel not to serve those things. Praise be to God. Amen. Why should someone point you to a cloud? And some of you still have got those things in your houses. One of these fine days, one of these fine days, I will pay you a visit. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. How are you looking at me? You have them on their walls. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. Mighty God, how God came to Mount Sunset. There is not God. Smoke of a rocket. You are claiming to be a cloud. An idol. Amen. Where are the Josiah's thing? Josiah. 
people who stood on the word of the Lord and smote everything. Yes. Grounded the bones into powder. Amen. Where is the zeal of Josiah? Mm. Praise be to God. Amen. When people will stand like who? <laughs> Give me the name of this young man that went with the javelin. Phineas. Yes, Phineas. The teaching of Balaam. <laughs> and here, this man, Zimri and Cosby, the children of Israel are weeping. Yeah? Before the tabernacle of the Lord. Because of the thing that has befallen the children of Israel. And Zimri and Cosby, they are marching and entering the tent. Moses saw it and he kept quiet. Aaron saw it and he kept quiet. But it was enough. Enough is enough. It was enough for who? Phineas. He took the javelin and went in the tent and thrust Phineas, Zimri, and Cosby, and they died. What did God do? God gave Phineas an everlasting covenant because of the zeal he had for the word of the Lord. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Israel is not reckoned among the nations. Even their worship cannot be found among the nations. Hallelujah. Amen. That is how serious it is because God ordained Israel to be a nation of priests. You will come to understand when you read Revelation chapter 5. He has made us kings and priests. You are not kings and priests. That is what Israel was supposed to be. Praise be to God. Amen. And when he takes out the book, did you have the book in the first place? What is that book connected to? The land. Title deed. Connected to the land. Praise be to God. Amen. Israel was not supposed to be reckoned among the nations. And who gave the prophecy? A false prophet. A false prophet. But the prophecy was right. Praise be to God. Amen. The prophecy was right. Hallelujah. Amen. So please, don't take what belongs to Israel. Take what Paul has preached unto you. Amen. Amen. Don't confuse yourself. Because Branham was not Elijah. At the evening time, there shall be light. And Elijah took away the curse. He placed a curse on Israel. There was no rain. These people three times could not worship God. There is no oil. There is no wine. There is no barley. There is no wheat. These people cannot appear before God because their hands are empty. Their hands are feeble. Praise be to God. Amen. You understand what Zechariah says? Virgins shall fail because there is no strength. Amen. You have no God. You are without strength in the world. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And Israel has become a byword. Praise be to God. People's hearts are failing for fear. Hallelujah. Yeah. But the evening time, that curse is rolled away. Praise be to God. Yeah. Because when you look at Elijah, he took away that curse. Now the land can be healed again. The heaven can bring rain. There is a cloud. Praise be to God. Rain can come down. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Let us, do, let us go to Elisha as I close. A man who had a double portion. Praise be to God. Yeah. What happened? Second Kings 2. Hallelujah. A man who had the devil portion. Look at those all Elijahs. Eli uh, Eli the people who came with the spirit of Elijah. Praise be to God. Now the land can be healed. Because Elijah has taken away the curse. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Chapter 2, verse 20. Now, Elisha now can say, bring me a cruise. <laughs> Praise be to God. Bring me a cruise. And they, and the men of the city said unto Elisha, Behold, I pray thee, the situation of this, of this city is pleasant. Hmm? As my Lord said. But the water is not, and the ground barren. And he said, bring me a new cruise, and put salt therein. And they put it to him. And he went forth unto the spring of the waters and cut the salt in there and said, Thus saith the Lord, I have healed these waters. There shall not be from thence any more death or barren land. So the waters were healed unto this day, according to the saying of Elisha, which is big. Do you see after Elisha, Elijah taking away the curse and the God has answered, now Elisha He's healing the land. Praise be to God. Amen. The land can be healed again. Praise be to God. Amen. The water can be healed. The water that was bitter. The land that was barren. Praise be to God.
the Spirit of God. A curse has been lifted up. Hallelujah. A man with a double portion. That is why I'm telling you, and the, the ministry of Elijah was so much important to the worship life of the children of Israel. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Because let me tell you, how could they worship? Yet the land was barren. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. God had told them that nothing, even their cattle will cast, they, 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 will not, they, they will not abort, let me borrow that word. They will not abort, they, they will not be barren, anyone barren in their land. Yet these people are barren in the land. They can't serve God. Praise be to God. Amen. So the curse has been taken away. Hallelujah. Amen. When you turn 2 Kings 6, that axe that was lost, the head of the axe that was lost, who restored it? Elisha. Praise be to God. The house of the Lord can now do what? Be rebuilt again. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Look at the worship being restored again at the evening time. Praise be to God. Amen. Land being healed. Amen. Water being restored again. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. These people can now break the land and they can plan. They have got something in their hand they can appear before the Lord. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Because the tabernacle is there. The temple is there. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, as I close, Israel is divided. Praise be to God. Amen. We have got Judah and Israel. Two tribes against ten. Praise be to God. At the evening, Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. As I close. And before I close, when you read 2 Kings 5, something happens. Naman. Naman is coming to be healed. Where? Where is Naman, Naman, Naman coming from? Yeah. Praise be to God. Amen. Representing how nations will come to Israel. <laughs> hey, do you see how God has arranged his word? Naman the Syrian coming in Israel to be healed. Where are we, are we in Zechariah 8? Where how many will hold on the skirt of a Jew? Saying there is a God in your land. Praise be to God. Amen. No man at that hour is coming to be healed because Elijah has taken away the curse. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. A man with a double portion. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. And I want to tell you, I'm closing in 2 Kings 8. Taken to bondage, 
Why two children? Why two sons? Where was the husband of this woman? She was a widow. Praise be to God. Why two sons? Israel and Judah. Praise be to God. What, is this, what does this woman have in her house? Nothing but little oil. Praise be to God. And the anointing of Elisha breaking bondage to Israel and Judah that was supposed to be taken to bondage, to captivity. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. The anointing of Elisha. Praise be to God. Breaking that bondage. Why? Because the sons of this woman, the creditor is coming. They are supposed to go to bondage. But here is an anointing in the land that breaks that bondage. Tell the woman, what do you have? I have nothing but little oil. Take your oil. Borrow vessels from your neighbors. Sell it and repay the debts. Let your children go free. Praise be to God. Amen. Israel and Judah will go free under the ministry of Elijah Amen. at the evening time. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. You see why it is important? Why Elijah was important to Israel? Not to we Gentiles. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. We have no portion or we have no, got no dealings whatsoever with Elijah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Elijah is specifically to Israel. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Elijah at that evening time. Elijah that anointing. Breaking the bondage that was supposed to take Israel to captivity. The woman selling the oil and repaying the debts. Praise be to God. Amen. And I want to tell you this blessed evening, this blessed afternoon, that God took it upon himself. Amen. Galatians, what does he tell us concerning Jesus Christ? He became a curse. To take away every curse. Amen. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. He became a curse. Because curse the man that hung himself upon a tree. Yes. But Jesus became a curse for you. Amen. He became a curse for me. To take away every curse. Every handwriting of ordinance that was against you. He nailed it on the cross. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. He nailed it on the cross. You can go free tonight. Amen. You can go free today. Praise Amen. be to God. Amen. Praise Amen. be to God. Amen. As long as Jesus was hanged on the cross, Amen. he took it on your behalf. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. There is therefore no condemnation Amen. to them that are in Christ Jesus. Amen. To them that do not walk under the flesh, Amen. but under the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is therefore no condemnation. Amen. But if the enemy remind you, if the enemy quicken your memory, remind him of what Jesus did on the cross. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Praise be to God. Amen. He broke every bondage, every captivity. Amen. He took it upon himself. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. But ours was paid in Jesus Christ. That is why everything is in Christ Jesus. Amen. We have been blessed in him. You are chosen in him. Amen. Everything it is in him. Praise be to God. Even your justification. Amen. Paul tells us, flee idolatry. Amen. Do you know do you know we Gentiles have got our own idols? Yes. yes. Flee. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. The things that were worshipped by your great grand grandfathers. <laughs> Praise be to God. Amen. Let God free free you from every demon yes. of your great grandfather. Every demon of your mother, of your father, Amen. let God free you Amen. because he has made you free. Praise Amen. be to God. Amen. Whom the son has set free is free indeed. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. May you flee away from every idol. Amen. What is an idol? Something that you value before God. Yes. Something that has taken a place in your life that you think about it more than God. Yes. Today people are worshipping their cars. Others are worshipping their houses. Others are bowing before their jobs. All those things are idols. Yes. Things that cannot redeem you. Yes. Things that cannot save you. Praise be to God. Amen. Because look at Belshazzar. He took the vessels. Vessels, okay? Yes. I know you are vessels. Amen. He took vessels. Yes. And he said, bring them. Let me drink wine. Yes. From them. What happened? A hand came. A man that was partying. A supernatural graffiti appeared on the wall and wrote something. Many, many take care of a sin. Because this man 
never regarded the vessels of the Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. And he chose, he wanted to drink wine from the vessels. Amen. What did God say? Because you have lit, you have not humbled yourself. <laughs> Belshazzar was the son of who? Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar could have taught the son a lesson. If God could, God took away the soul of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar went and ate with animals. How many years? Seven. He came out from the forest, a hairy man. He was eating grass like a cow. <laughs> but one funny thing, his place was not taken on the throne. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. But Belshazzar, what happened? Yes, because he took the vessels of the Lord. Vessels were on the table of the Lord and drink, drank wine from it. His kingdom was taken. And he was slain the very day. Praise be to God. Amen. And I want to tell you today, you are the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are the body of Christ. Amen. The anointing. Amen. People that are housing the anointing. Praise Amen. be to God. Amen. Let no demon come close to you. Amen. You have no dealings with demons. You have got no dealings with the strange altars. Because let me tell you, those sacrifices that were made by Gentiles, they were sacrificed to idols and to devils. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, bless nothing before God. Love the Lord with all thy heart, with thy spirit, and thy soul. Love him with all that God has given unto you. Amen. Love God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Don't have an idol. Amen. Do you know how many of your flesh can become an idol? Yes, yes, yes. Today people are glorifying them, their bodies more than they glorify the creator. Yes. Romans 1. It talks about people worshipping the creation. creation more than the creator. Those are Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And don't expect anything away from the people. Gentiles who are not saved. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. So, let me, as I close, serve God. Amen. Elijah coming, bringing a curse upon Israel. There is no rain. These people cannot appear before the Lord. Praise be to God. Amen. At the evening time, after three and a half years, breaking that curse, a type of atonement, leading the children of Israel to an atonement. That sacrifice that was accepted, that is our Lord Jesus Christ, that was accepted, Amen. and he rose again. Praise Amen. be to God. Amen. He took your sin. He that knew no sin, Thank you, Jesus. he that knew no sin, became sin, that we might become the very righteousness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. He that knew no sin, became sin. Any sin that you can name up upon the face of the earth, that is what Jesus became. Amen. Anything that you can imagine as sin, he took it upon himself Amen. and he became sinful. Amen. That is why he went to hell. You have got no reason to go to hell today. And I want to tell you as the body of Christ, even if you attempt to go there and Jesus went there on your behalf, you will be, you will be told, access denied. Because someone has already appeared for you. Yes. Praise be to God. Yes. Someone has already appeared for you. You have got no reason. There is no space for you here. Someone came and took your place. And he rose again. Amen. When he rose again, he rose for your justification. Amen. He rose for my justification. Amen. I'm standing today justified Amen. in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Any handwriting of ordinance that rose against me. Oh, Jesus. Anything that the enemy could lay hold against me yes. was nailed on the cross. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Was nailed on the cross. Amen. I have nothing to answer. Hallelujah. What am I supposed to do? Only believe in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Trusting in Him. Amen. Believing that God has made a way for me. Amen. And whatever it is you are fighting, whatever things there are that you are going through, Thank you, Jesus. look away to Jesus. Amen. Look away to Calvary. Amen. Because that is where Amen. you and my, you and me, we received our pardon. Amen. We have been forgiven. Amen. Look at Jesus in, in His earthly ministry. Amen. When they took this woman, when she was caught where? In adultery. And they took this woman to Jesus to be judged. What did he do? Jesus never debated with these people. He looked at them and he realized these people is the way they were born. And he asked them, who among you has never committed sin? And he knew these people knew the scripture very well. Where David say, in, my, in sin did my mother conceive me. So all of us in sin we came. 
Praise be to God. Amen. So he asked them, who among you has never committed sin? Be the first one to cast the stone. One by one, begin with the eldest. They threw down the stones and walked away. Praise be to God. Amen. At the end of the day, it was Jesus with this woman and a heap of stones. Woman, where the accusers, I cannot see them anymore. What did Jesus tell the woman? Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Look at the ministry of Elijah to Israel. You have got no dealing whatsoever. You as the Gentiles, you as the body of Christ. I will not be calling you Gentiles. Because Gentiles have got issues. I will be calling you the body of Christ. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. From today I will be calling you the body of Christ. Christ. Because Gentiles have got things. Amen. These are the people who cause so much trouble to the children of Israel. Because Israel, where did, where did they get those idols? They got it from Gentiles. People who worship the moon. People who worship the sun. People who worship clouds. Serpents. All those things. Because I want to ask you a question. How did the serpent find its way in Canaan? Neushtan. Neushtan was the brass serpent that saved the children of Israel. Where? In the wilderness. But how did, did it end up in the land of Canaan? Something that saved the children of Israel at one given time. It now become an idol. Praise be to God. Amen. But who smote it? Who smote it? Praise be to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us stand up. <coughs> Jesus, keep me near the cross. Song number two zero five. Two zero five songs of only believe Jesus keep me near the cross. There is a precious fountain, free to all to see. A healing stream flows from Calvary's mountain. Praise be to God. Do you see those that that woman? In the days of Elisha with the two children, the two sons, that is Israel and Judah. As you go home, think about the two women that came to Solomon. Hallelujah. Amen. The two women that came to Solomon. <laughs> the two women that came to Solomon. Aholiba and Ahola. Because they were they were what? One killed her son and another one. Israel and Judah. Praise be to God. As you go home, think on that. Jesus gave me near the cross. There are precious fountains.
Oh 
precious and wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we honor you. We bless you, Lord. We magnify your name, O oh Father. Amen. We thank you, Father, because of your goodness. Amen. We thank you, Lord, because of your love. Amen. We thank you, Father, because of your favor. Amen. We thank you, King Lord, for the love you shed in our hearts. When we look at the things, Lord, you took us for. When you look at how we worship idols, Lord. But by the message, by the grace of the Lord through Apostle Paul. Amen. Father, you call us from the world, world of idol worship to worshiping and serving the true and the living God. Amen. Father, we bow our heads in your presence Amen. with the humility and reverence of Jesus. Amen. We pray, Father, forgive us, Lord Jesus, Amen. of our shortcomings, of our weaknesses, of our limitations, Father. Amen. Forgive us, Lord God. Be gracious and be merciful to us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, for your word that has empowered us. We thank you, Father, for the word that has given us courage, Amen. that has given us hope, that has given us a reason to live again. That has given us hope, Lord Jesus, to still soldiering on our God. Father, this precious evening, this precious afternoon, with all the authority, with all the reverence and the humility, Lord Jesus, we pray, Father, come and bless us. Bless us, O oh Father. Uplift us, Lord Jesus, from every bondage, from every captivity. Break every yoke that is upon us, Lord Jesus. Because the Bible tells us, Lord, you rose for our justification. And you are standing tonight, oh Father, justified in the presence of the Lord. We appreciate you, Father, for the great work you've done in our lives. Opening our eyes, Lord Jesus, to the great realities, to the great work that you've done in the Bible. Oh God, this blessed afternoon, there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. No peril, no famine, no tribulation, no demon, no angels, no death, no height, Lord God can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We magnify your name, O oh Father. This dear ones, O oh Father, I commit them in your hands. Bless them, O oh God. Fight for their battles, Lord Jesus. King of glory, give them victory because you are the victorious Christ. You are the one that conquered both the world of sin and other sin, Lord Jesus. You emerge even from hell, Lord God, and nothing can separate us from that love, Lord Jesus. You are our strength. You are our power. You are our authority, Lord Jesus. You are King of Glory, our shield. You are our reward, O oh God. This blessed afternoon, Father, bless your children, O oh God, with all their needs, with all their desires. Some spoken, some unspoken, Lord. Come through for your people, Lord Jesus. Give them hope. Encourage them, Lord Jesus. Bless them, O oh Father. Uplift them, Lord Jesus. And may you put their feet on the rock, O oh God, because this rock is Christ. Father, may every foundation around their life that is not solid, that is not built upon the foundation of the Lord, let it shake, Lord Jesus. Let it be destroyed, oh Father. Let them stand on the sure foundation, the foundation of your word. Father, we bless you, we honor you. As we dismiss, Lord Jesus, dismiss us with your blessing. Let the grace of the Lord go before them, Lord Jesus. Make our way, Father, for them. Make Do a new thing in their life, Lord Jesus. Bless them, oh Father. Uplift them, oh God. Bless our pastor. Give him safe journey, mercies, oh God. The day will be traveling back and to any other place, Lord Jesus. Cover him by your precious blood. Let your blood anoint him. Let your blood anoint the vehicle, Lord Jesus. Protect it, oh God. Protect him, oh Father. Because he's the strong man of the house. And Father, we pray, may your power and authority rest upon him, Lord Jesus. Because just like Lord God, the Bible tells us, smite the shepherd and scatter the sheep. Lord, we know if the shepherd is smitten, Lord God, the sheep will be scattered. But Father, we pray, knowing Lord, he's the strong man of this house. You give him the commission. Bless him, O oh Father. Enrich him, Lord Jesus, for our sake, Lord God. For, the, for your name's sake, Lord Jesus. Bless him, O oh Father. That when you bless him, O oh God, we ask his members, O oh God. We ask his fellow people that are under his ministry will be blessed as well, O oh God. We thank you, we honor you, Lord Jesus. With Jesus, let me do prayer and believe. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you and keep you and sustain you. For the visitors in our midst.